Welcome to today's 3D print. Here we have the TiVo Tornado, another printer sent to me by GearBest. And I am looking forward to this one because it is the first direct um, clone slash um, replica of the CR10 that has a company's own twist. It's not just made to look like the CR10, it's theoretically made to be as good as the CR10. We're going to find out. So I see some specs that I like that um, I would consider an upgrade. It's got an AC heater, so the heat bed will actually reach ABS temperatures and it'll get there quick. Um, it has a full size SD card slot. I love the blow through fans on the control box. Theoretically, they should be much more effective. One fan on one side, one fan on the other side, continuous airflow blowing through. I'll probably end up replacing them with quiet fans because um, these guys never use quiet fans. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, that's all my Zyro filament that I got in. That's the five rolls of the Sparkle, Twinkle, Red, and the three rolls of the regular Red. So I'll be printing with those soon, $11 a kilogram. That's a good deal for specialty filament. So let's get started. Um, this video will be similar to the CR10 Mini, in which case I will pause and resume at key points when we tear into this. So. I'm going to pause you guys while I tear open this box and then I will show you the contents. And that right there is the box. I opened it upside down so I let it slide out of the box so it would be right side up when I pull this apart. But um, I do love that they manufacturers are starting, at least the higher end manufacturers, the better Chinese manufacturers, are starting to use quality packing. That is a double thick box. That's a good thing. I like that. It decreases the likelihood of the printer being destroyed on its way here. And it is all custom cut foam. So all of this foam is custom cut to fit exactly right. Good or bad printer, that is a practice that I like seeing manufacturers do. This is the material I was told about. One is already on the printer and they give you an extra one, which is cool. The surface is a lot bigger than 300 by 300 because it has a very large print bed but just uses 300 by 300 of the print bed so that's an that's an interesting method we'll see how that works i'm going to pause you guys again while i continue to dismantle this packing all righty the primary components are all out of the boxes um i don't like the plastic wire loom i mean it works fine i prefer the nylon that the cr10 uses but that's not a quality issue, that's a personal preference issue. I do like the downsized box, it's much smaller. It's about half the size of the CR10 box. I wonder if that's just a matter of rearranging the components or, or what, that's interesting. Hmm. There's an adjustment here for something, I have no idea what that's for. Reset button, buzzer, twist knob. I like the bigger, beefier knob on the CR10 and other printers. It uses the same two connections CR10 uses. It is completely disconnectable, so the control box is completely separate from the printer. The heat bed connection is connected here. That, that is soldered. And it, you should be able to use a similar style um, Y axis tension relief connection as we do here. You should do the same thing. It's a similar construction. Looks about the same as the CR10 in general. You know, you got your double wide rails, your skinnier rails, and your stepper attached with your idler pulley to raise up the thickness. The difference here is that the bed, this is your print area. So these don't get in the way. So if you want to put glass down, it's easy. Just put a CR10 piece of glass down and just put it in the right position. That's all. The, the, these won't get in the way. You don't have to make the glass this big because you're never going to be able to print to that area anyway. Um, can I get that out? I better be careful with that. Um, rest of the components, here's your gantry. Interesting note, no 3D printing. It is all metal. What about this one? Well, it's a rail, but that's all metal. I One thing I do like, um, I like the fact that they went with customization for color via anodized aluminum metal parts instead of the silly strips that Creality likes using. I don't know, it just looks nicer. 
doesn't change performance. It doesn't affect how it operates. It's the same thing. Um, this is using proper equilateral triangles. Looks damn similar to the CR-10. They probably copied it <laughs> millimeter for millimeter and then just made whatever improvements they wanted. Z-Rod looks straight. I do not see any flexing or warping. That's good. Uh, even this bracket here, the hold the Z-Stepper onto the frame rail here, is metal as well. That is a nice improvement. Even the CR-10 Mini, although they use injection molded now, they are using still plastic for here and for here, um, while this one uses metal. Probably doesn't make a difference, but I prefer metal. It looks nicer. It feels nicer. Um, looks like it uses the same type of fan, although it does use a 3D printed duct for the fan. That part is 3D printed. Uh, interesting. There is a heat sink in there. Oh, okay. The hot end is a different design. It's offset from the frame, and it's square, and it has veins for heat sinking. And the nozzle, it's a smaller nozzle, still 0.4, but the overall nozzle is smaller, and it is insulated with a heat blanket. Although the ends are open, which will allow this cooling air to beat on it a little bit. Otherwise, it looks fine. Could be rails, could be wheels. Belts look nice, everything looks straight. It's already pre-tensioned. It's got this funky Titan extruder, whatever that is. I, guess, I don't know if it's a, a clone of something or if it's their own design. Um, this I'm going to try to get this off as one piece because I'd like to keep it. Just I don't know why I'm dumb, but it just looks cool. But this shows that the bed is level because they were able to print over the entire bed and it showed that the printer worked. That's pretty cool. It's a nice touch. Had to take a long time to do that. Uh, there is your giant silicone heat pad on the bottom there. That is nice. I wonder if I can order just that and put that on my CR-10. That would be nice. Big anodized aluminum plate for the bottom with your B-wheels. They are all adjustable on one side, although that one looks bent. Ew. It might just be loose. But that one looks tweaked. Hopefully that's just loose and not bent. Uh, here's where your rail will go. Even the feet for the rubber feet is metal, anodized aluminum, same color. No decorative covers on the ends though. It's cut and polished, but it's not, uh, it doesn't have any pretty you know, covers like the Creality does. It'd be a nice touch to add that. But that, again, has nothing to do with function. I don't care about that for function. Then your goodie bags. Another upgrade I like, full size USB-A. Not the stinking mini or micro. I like the full size. It's a more reliable connection. The cables are more reliable. Your standard C13 power cable. This was interesting. The spatula is not sharpened, so it's worthless. But it's interesting. They wrapped the spatula in plastic before they assembled it. Because the plastic is in between the wood. So these blades were already wrapped, and then they were stuck on the assembly line and slapped together and riveted with the plastic on them. That's just interesting. I guess it's a cost-saving tactic. It doesn't matter, but it's just I found that fascinating. Uh, your bed leveling nuts and screws and springs. They're nice and beefy, and they are the flat springs like the CR-10. That's good. Here is your T-brackets and your end-stop switch for the gantry sides. So it comes with an extra Titan extruder. Does that mean the Titan extruder is not very good, or did they just decide to toss one in? Um, I don't know. Like, do they expect it to fail? It's interesting sometimes. I wonder why they choose what parts to give you, what parts not to give you. I have no idea. That's cool. But your wrench. Although I do not see a wrench for the eccentric nuts, unless that is the size. A whole bunch of Allen keys, a little screwdriver, your full-size SD card, looks like an extra nozzle and an extra thermistor. Okay, so there's an extra thermistor. And your extra nozzle, zip ties, and your full-size 8 gigabyte memory card, Elite Pro. Now here's the interesting part. I love the fact that you have a large bag. You can take all of this and put it in this large bag with the TiVo Tornado manual so that you know what this is. That's a nice touch. 
or manufacturers to do that. Because then I can take all of this stuff that I don't use on a daily basis, put it in this bag, and that manual will identify the contents of this bag as being for the Tivo Tornado. That's good. I have no idea what this is. Facebook group installation video. Uh, Black Widow installation video. Black Widow, tarantula, tarantula, tarantula. Why do I care about all that? Looks like they included a bunch of tarantula links, like wrong card. Okay. I guess tarantula is another one of their printers. After sales card, I guess this is warranty information, replacement parts. Let's see if there's anything good in the manual. Letter from Tiva. Oh, I do like this. It has a nice CAD based drawing, crisp, clean instruction manual. Okay, this is nice. I wish more manufacturers would go to the extra level of including a nice manual like this for putting their printer together. I probably don't even need it, but it's nice to have. That's cool. I like that. Including setting up slicers. Flashing firmware. Replacement parts. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, I'll have to go through in detail to see if it's actually effective, but that is looking very nice. I wish all manufacturers would include that. You hear me, Creality, with your Ender 2, Hicktop? Those Ender 2s would have sold a lot better on Amazon if you'd have had a nice manual to go with it to tell people how to put it together. That's a great printer, but you had no manual, and I bet you that's why you got nine returns. All right, I'm gonna pause you again, and I will begin the assembly of the printer. I will resume at each step as I see fit. This video is going to be a little longer because I'm. I want to read this to you. First of all, it's not Chingris; it's actually English. So they actually went to the effort of having somebody write or translate this into readable English. But this is some of the best bed leveling instructions I've ever read from a manufacturer, ever. Uh, they're my instructions, <laughs> not literally. I don't think they took anything from me, but this is the exact instructions I give. Heat it up. Slot a piece of paper between nozzle and build plate. Adjust each of the four thumb screws under the bed until the piece of paper slides with just a little bit of drag in all locations on the build plate. What they should, what the one thing they forgot is to tell you to go around twice. Because when you change one, you affect the others, but I can forgive that. It said, now here's the cool part. You may need to adjust, make fine adjustments to the bed level when you start printing. The first layer of the print will show whether the distance to the nozzle and build plate is correct. You want it to be pushed into the build plate surface slightly to maximize surface area while still allowing good extrusion flow. That's fantastic. You can try to carefully adjust the thumb screws during the first layer of the print while the plate is moving until the distance between the nozzle and the build plate is producing smooth extruded lines. After you have fine tuned the bed level during the first layer, you may want to stop the print, clear the build plate, and restart the print. I could not have written it better in short, succinct instructions. TiVo, I want to. I don't. I have no idea whether this printer is garbage or great, but. That was a fantastic set of instructions for a new person to read in their manual for leveling a print bed. Because 99% of print problems are bed level problems. Very, very good. I am pleased by that. I hope other manufacturers take note of that. Hell, copy that verbatim and put it in your manuals because that applies to 99% of the Cartesian printers out there. Fantastic. And they all need to start including that. Let's start building this thing. The build plate is held on with zip ties, and this was just a loose screw. I can see that that is loose, so that should not be a problem once I tighten that up, I hope. Um, it's got like some sort of insulation, foam and foil insulation, and a what looks like a silicone heat pad, an AC powered silicone heat pad. Nice quality silicone wiring, I don't see any problem with that. The build plate appears to be some textured glass it's I, I don't know if you can see that in the video but it's textured like knurled like knurling on a bolt but I think it's I think it's glass it kind of sounds odd but it looks like glass it might be some sort of composite and then the build surface is adhered to the glass that's fascinating well I'm gonna start putting this together first things first I'm going to pull this out of here, put that aside, 
And I'm going to adjust this because this is a bit wobbly. All right, using my adjustable wrench, using my adjustable wrench and one of the Allen keys. This wrench will also fit. My wrench was just easier. Um, I tightened up all six of these. That, that tilt went away. It was just a loose bolt, no problem. And now there is no wobble, twist, or play. I don't even have to adjust the eccentrics. They are perfect. Well, that one could use some tightening. The end four good. The center one can use just a tiny bit of tensioning. Not much. But now I'm going to install the bed. Ah! I got it! Yeah! Got the whole thing off intact. I don't know why I want to do that. Call it an OCD thing, but I just thought that was cool. <laughs> so there's the print bed. It's installed. Everything's nice. Wire comes out the back towards the stepper motor. Time to install the gantry. Your next step is to install the gantry. Before I did that, I tightened up every single bolt on the base and on the gantry and they all required a little bit of tightening, all the major ones going through the extrusions. None of them were loose, but they all could take a little bit of snugging. That just happens during shipment. Always snug up all your bolts. Um, you put those two in, they spin in by hand, but don't tighten them. Turn them in until they just stop so that these don't resist tightening up. When you put them in, they also turn in by hand. Since you have those snugged up, you can crank these tight. I do, as with the CR10, I do not use the washers. I want that hard surface on surface with no give. Then your gantry will be installed. Then we gotta install the side brackets, the T brackets, using the hammer nuts. You want all these tight frame on frame connections you do want tight. Don't go insane and strip your bolts, but you do want them very tight because any flex in the frame of your printer is going to give you noise and you will get ugly prints. No one wants ugly prints. Alrighty, the basic structure is done. Now to install the T-brackets. So this one's gonna go over there and this one here with the end stop. It's gonna go over here. There we go, the right side T-bracket is installed. Don't forget to make sure and look inside and make sure your hammer nuts actually turn. Because if they don't turn, they're not locked in, they don't do any good. Alrighty, I believe the mechanical construction is complete. This T-bracket is installed, the limit switch is installed, the limit switch is installed back here. I've checked all the nuts, they're all tight. All the bolts are tight. This feels nice and tight. This feels nice and tight. This is nice and tight. This doesn't wiggle one little bit. Uh, the whole entire thing moves instead of that part moving. Um, these are all tightened up. These are all tightened up. I have no idea the bed level yet or not, of course, because we're gonna have to adjust that once we turn it on. I did find one massive flaw in the design of this printer. It comes with, what I do, with, oh, it's in the bag, this Titan extruder thing. Okay, can you see this? Now, this Titan extruder has an adjustment screw so that you can increase the tension on the filament. So if your filament's not, if it's slipping a little bit, you can tighten it up, make it grip better. Anybody want to take a wild guess where that adjustment screw is? Yeah. Behind the rail. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it's behind the rail. Ah, come on, Tivo. That that's that's a uh, that's a that's a doozy right there. Um, my solution to that problem, if I need to adjust that, is I'm going to get my drill and I'm going to drill a hole straight through here. Then all I have to do is raise the z-axis up until I can see the adjustment through the rail and then I can stick a, the wrench in there and adjust it. But that's a that's a doozy of a, a boner move there. It's like, derp. <laughs> I believe my last step is now to electrically connect all of the functions to the control box and then begin power up and see what happens. I'll be right back. Well, it's working. 
Um, while it's printing the Marvin, figure we could talk about it a little bit. First, it's a howler. I first turned it on and I was like, wow, this machine's quiet. And then those fans kicked on and it sounds like a tornado in the house. I guess the name TiVo Tornado really fits. Because <laughs> it sounds like a tornado. So I'm definitely going to have to eviscerate that box and replace the fans. Now, let's talk a little bit about the machines. The machine, I ran into a couple of problems that bother me. They're not big problems, they're not fatal problems, but they are problems that TiVo needs to work on. Quality control. Not as bad as the ANET E10, but there are quality control issues that need to be addressed. Almost every single bolt on the printer was a little bit loose. <laughs> I mean, everything needed an eighth turn tightening, and some more. Um, a couple of things need a redesign. The x-axis limit switch needs a standoff because these bolts are loose and you can't tighten them because if you tighten them you just squish the socket for the x-axis so they need to either be stiff enough or they need a standoff to allow you to snug those bolts down without them just sitting there loose um, I had to loosen them put the limit switch in and then tighten them a little bit just because they were too loose um, they need to fix the problem with being able to access the um, tightening control for the Titan extruder. Uh, put some quieter fans in the thing. Come on. You're in China. What will it cost you? An extra dollar? Put some quiet fans in this thing. This fan's quiet. Not crazy quiet, but it's quiet. This fan's quiet, but this fan, these two fans are like a tornado. I mean, it, it earns its namesake, TiVo Tornado. I was able to level it in one shot. No problem. Live level. Just pick the whole thing up like this and adjust my level. And, um, what gives with me having to label my printer an ender? Because, can you see that? Yes, you can. There is no spool holder on this printer. Huh? Come on. What would it cost to include a piece of stamped steel to include a spool holder? So, like I do with all my printers, I stuck my ender holder up there. So that my spool will sit up there. I had to add that. Uh, can't save the settings, although it already comes with jerk set at 10. That's very good. Um, acceleration is 1000, I lowered it to 500. Just, I prefer quality. It does heat up lightning fast. Um, the wires going to the Y or Z uh, motor and limit switch are too short. Make them longer. You can't move this box around because you got a very short tether between the box and the, that particular set of wires. Also, when I went to tighten the connections, for the heat bed and the hot end, the sockets on the actual box began to turn. That's not good, because that means I'm twisting wires inside. Thankfully, I caught that. Average Joe might not catch that, because this this um, threaded cover here was a little rough going on, and so I had to turn it hard enough that it began to turn the actual socket. That's not good, so I'm gonna have to open this up and see why that's turning. It's probably, I'm, I'm assuming there's a capture nut on the inside and it's loose. Um, I don't like the way these wires are. See how these wires are exposed here? You just have this plastic sheathing. Even though it's technically not a big deal, and it is grommeted, so the wires aren't going to chafe on a metal edge. Um, it would just be neater if you did what Creality did and had that nice um, nylon sheathing that went all the way inside the box so it's not exposed. Uh, something else I'd like to see you do is um, flip this power coupling over so the switch is on top. So I can reach down like this and flip the switch instead of having to reach behind like this to find that switch. Minor nitpick, not a big deal, but something that should be looked at. Absolutely love the custom commands. Front left, front right, rear right, rear left. That is wonderful for leveling the bed. Great idea. More manufacturers should start including that. Um, there was something that was missing. What was missing from the commands? Oh, it auto-recognizes when I take out an SD card and put an SD card in, but sometimes it says SD card inserted, but then when you go to where it says print SD, it says no SD card. Simple solution, pull it out, put it back in. But there's no command to tell it to initialize SD cards, so you just have to pull it out and put it back in. Also, come on, no sample G code? Half the fun is wondering what in the heck you guys are going to give us to print for our test print. There was nothing on the SD card. That's kind of lame. I was hoping for a cat or a dog or a frog or a duck or something. You know, give me something cool to print. So instead, I'm printing a Marvin, and so far, 
it's looking spotless. I don't see a problem yet. Obviously, I'll have to examine it once it's done. But um, overall, the build went well. The lack of a spool holder was strange. I don't get that. Uh, sheathing, loose nuts everywhere. These were all loose. These were all loose. Um, these were okay. Um, these were okay. Um, these bolts were all just a hair loose. These two bolts here were loose. Um, the mount for the Y-axis motor. I don't like it. It's metal, but it's aluminum plate metal, and it's just a right angle with no gusseting. It appears to be strong enough. Nobody has reported problems yet, even people who suspect it might be a problem, such as I do. But I believe over time that might stress because it's being pulled on by that belt. Um, also, all the grub screws were loose on the Z, on the Y, and on the X. I had to tighten up all the grub screws. They all gave a little click turn. Um, beyond that, these, this triangle and that triangle were tight. This triangle was tight. I didn't have to do anything to it. The bed was, of course, loose, but that tightened up. Um, otherwise, I am pleased with the construction. I absolutely love the material usage. I love the color usage. I love the instruction manual. Uh, what gives? No nippers? Come on. They probably cost you 10 cents in China. Include a pair of nippers. These are nice. And include a sharpened spatula. This piece of crap, unsharpened wooden one's junk. You know, I, I guarantee you there's probably no cost difference between this spatula that Creality included and the spatula you included in China. Well, theirs is 1.5 cents and yours is 1.4 cents. I'm, I'm being facetious or whatever you call that. Um, but you get my point. It's not a lot of money. Include a good scraper that's sharpened. Um, beyond that, I like what I see. I think I'm going to enjoy this. I love how fast it heated up. Although defaulting to 70 degrees C for the bed temperature for PLA is probably not the smartest idea. Uh, since PLA melts at 60, it softens at 60. 55, 60. So default bed temp for PLA should be 50 C, not 70 C. But beyond that, I have this going at 150%. I just took my files from my CR10 and threw it on here, since um, I don't have a profile set up for this, but I imagine it's virtually identical to the CR10, and it's looking like it's printing just as good, although I think I might see some artifacting that'll be interesting, we'll see what happens when it's done printing, uh, might just be me going too fast, but beyond that, I am so far pleased, we shall see what happens. I'm going to start cranking out some test prints, I'm going to start abusing it, I'm going to start running it 24-7, and I'll let you guys know what I think. But for now, I like it. It, it. My initial impression is positive, but guarded. I don't like all the loose screws, I don't like the loose connections on there, I'm hoping that's just get them out the door QC problems. They're not as severe as the ANA E10, but that is an issue. These things should be a little tighter. Uh, beyond that, Stay tuned. Oh, also make sure you straighten out your Bowden tube. My Bowden tube had some pretty rough bends in it. That um, it, it was actually a struggle for me to push the filament through the Bowden tube. Once I straightened it out so that it was a nice curve, I didn't have that problem. I might even shorten it. It looks like it might be a hair too long. It might be longer than it needs to be. But um, part of that is the way they attach this. They have to make sure they keep this arc. These arcs nice. You don't want you don't want tight bends in your Bowden tube because you're just going to cause this to stress more trying to push filament through and that's going to ruin your prints. Um, beyond that, stay tuned. More to come. Links are down below. Do I suggest buying this? Mm, not yet. The reviews I've seen are very positive and what I've seen so far is very positive but I can't endorse a product until I've heard it a little bit. <laughs> um, the, the outlook is positive. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, they have an advantage over Creality and the CR10 in that they're coming in second. When you're coming in second, you can watch what the first place guy did and fix his mistakes. So we'll see if that pans out over time. And um, Creality is, for example, already starting to make some of these improvements as you saw with the CR10 Mini. They got rid of the 3D printed parts. They made some corrections that were needed from the first one. I do hope Creality switches over to the AC silicone heat bed that these guys are using because this is nice. It heats up fast. I mean, really, really fast. Like two minutes, I was there, done, ready to go. 
Um, that's really advantageous. And probably better for amp usage, too. Beyond that, that's it. Gearbest sent me this printer for free. So I was paid roughly, what, 400 bucks? 370 bucks for this review, because they sent me a free printer. So I can't ignore that value. Um, I hope you like my review. I hope you will stay tuned and listen to my upcoming future reviews. I beat the living snot out of this printer, because I'm going to push it hard. You're coming in second place after Creality already came out with their CR10, which means you had the opportunity to see what CR10 did right and what the CR10 did wrong. So I'm going to come down harder on you if you don't fix those mistakes, TiVo. So we'll see what happens. Enjoy. Come on, you didn't think I was going to leave you hanging without at least showing you the Marvin. Not bad. Very, very clean. The keychain hook is extremely clean. The layers look very smooth. Feels very smooth. There's a visual artifact on the sides. Salmoning. Really weird. That might have something to do with me cranking up the speed. So I'm going to do the Benchy at 100% without doing it at 150% just to give it a fair test. This by no re this by no means harms it. The the quality is is top notch. I like what I'm seeing. Overhangs are good and clean. Edges are good and clean. Not as good as my Ender, of course, but easily as good as the CR10. I would call it an equal. So we shall see as I make more prints. I will be back to you guys later, and probably next week with a whole bunch of big prints off of this printer.